Good day everybody. My name is Mark Trahan, a three-time Western Canadian Superbike champion. And today we're going to learn a little bit about the art of cornering a motorcycle. You're cornering basics and what needs to happen in order to be safe while doing so. Some of you might know that motorcycles must lean to change direction. And that leaning is done by counter steering. Counter steering is when you push up on a handlebar the opposite way of the way the motorcycle is actually supposed to go which causes it to lean in a corner. Once the bike begins to lean, counter steering pressure is reduced and other dynamics take over that cause the motorcycle to arc around the curve including your front end rake, your trail geometry, all kinds of other technology. Now camber thrust is something that describes what the tire is leaned over right and how it orbits around its axis when rolling on a surface so in other words the rounded profile of a motorcycle tire acts like a tapered styrofoam cup when it's rolled on its side gives it a push and it rolls in a circle as the inside edge of the tire is forced to adopt a smaller radius the outer edge then is giving rotational speed the inner edge would prefer to travel at a smaller road speed and this happens if the wheel is allowed to turn in a vertical axis to the point of the cone. Just a solid code on a table and if given a push. For our purpose today, all you really need to understand is that your motorcycle is designed to track around the curve with minimal effort once the bike is in a lean front end geometry kind of effect. If your bike's properly maintained and has relatively new tires with nearly the original profile intact, you should be able to initiate, lean, and then maintain that lean angle without introducing any significant handlebar inputs. Usually problems occur when the rider messes this process up. Most bikes will track predictably and with little effort as long as the rider doesn't interfere with the process or introduces counterproductive inputs. Like jumping from one side to the other on your seat or reacting by pushing the handlebar the wrong way. Some riders say that they can't round a corner without using significant handlebar pressure to keep their machine on the desired path. Instead of being able to relax and let the bike carve the path, they fight the bars all the way around the corner. It's possible that the machine is to blame, but these days, this is rarely true. While I've ridden bikes with really bad cornering dynamics, most of the modern machines offer a balanced neutral handling that requires little to no mid-corner intervention. The, the only reason for handlebar adjustments are because of mid-corner changes in turn radius, camber or surface, or smooth, constant radius. A lot of times you can adjust your cornering radius just by using throttle input. Accelerating will cause your bike to go a little wider and slowing it down causes the corner to get a little sharper. It's important to note though that different bikes, different types of bikes, all handle a little bit different. Sport bikes are responsive to steering inputs, while big cruisers like Harleys tend to have a little slower steering but more stable being still. If the rider does all the right things and the differences in the machine does not make that much of a difference. The trick is to have the knowledge and skill to complete a corner proficiently. Basically, it's just usually much more productive to evaluate the user instead of blaming the machine. So, through some of the things that happen, right? Number one, proper tension on the handlebars. The front end of the bike needs to be free to move up and down and side to side in response to both large and small changes in the load surface. So, being stiff on the handlebars causes the motorcycle to feel reluctant to turn. If you ever see a motorcycle do something called a high-speed wobble, you notice that the motorcycle always goes in a straight line once the rider falls off. That's due to no more hard inputs being put into the handlebars, right? Loose arms allow just a fluid reaction. Body position is the other important part, right? Think of your bike as your dance partner who wants you to lead. In the case of the cornering dance, a slight dip of the shoulder to the inside of the curve will encourage smoother cornering. In contrast, a rider who stays upright or leans outside its, its stepping on the bike's toes, causing it to resist good cornering. 
and looking through the turn. You need to look through the turn properly. You, you need to look where you want to go. By keeping your visual attention through the turn and towards the corner exit, your mind is able to better manage the corner. The other advantage is that the landscape slows down when you look ahead. For example, if you're driving in your car and you look out the side window, you see the fence posts go by really fast, right? But if you look way up ahead, you can see them coming at you really nice and slow, right? So looking ahead will not only make you a cornering master, but without habitually looking ahead, you'll never become one. So keep your eyes up. So look well ahead, counter steer to start the lean in the corner. Start giving it throttle as soon as the bike is leaned and use a gentle drive and then progressively feed more throttle as you get out of the corner. Very important to relax, get your correct angles and finish the turn and look where you want to go. If you have any questions or comments, please do so in the, in the comments section. Thank you and have a nice day.